Hi, and welcome back to the Scout Sew Along. In today's lesson, we'll be applying our bias facing to finish the neckline and then hemming up the body of our scouts. You can hem your scout after you attach your sleeves, but since you're able to try on your shirt at this point, I like to do it now so I don't have the arms flapping around the machine while I hem. It's really personal preference on that, so feel free to hem yours like I do now or wait until the end if you're someone who likes that as a last step. So let's get started with our bias facing. The neckline of the scout is finished with a strip of bias binding that forms a facing, hence why we call it a bias facing. This is a commonly used finishing technique in ready to wear garments, so it's likely you have a shirt or two in your closet with a neckline or an armhole finished in this fashion. A lot of people have a hard time getting these bias facings to lay flat, but if you follow along with each step in this video and you don't skip steps, I know you're gonna to wanna to skip steps, but they're there for a reason, I promise, <laughs> then you'll end up with a great looking neckline. The first thing we're going to do is take our bias strip, place it with the right side facing up, and fold the two short edges together. We're gonna to sew right across there using a one quarter inch seam allowance. Here we are at the machine. I'm just gonna align that short edge, move my pin, and sew across it. Now I'm not going to back tack because I find that can kind of pucker the edges, but I am gonna leave a little bit of thread tail just so it's less likely to unravel as I work. We now need to press the seam allowance open. You don't need to do this on a sleeve roll, it's just easier for me to demo. Get that nice and flat. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is quarter my facing. So I just fold it in half. We have the sewn edge here and a fold here. So that marks the halves. Then bring the pin over to the seam. And mark these halves. This will just make it a little easier to align to your neckline. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the shirt neckline. We're gonna quarter it. So to do that, start by taking your two shoulder seams, align them and follow the pattern back to the center back. If you happen to notch your center back and your center front, then you've already got this covered. I did not. You also don't need to, and it's a short quarter inch seam allowance here, so you don't wanna cut in far if you do. All right, so now we have the center back and the center front. So bring those two together and walk the neckline edge out. So this is the quarter point. And then do that again for the other side. Again, walk the neckline edge. And the final quarter. All right, so now we need to align our neck band, our neck facing, to the neckline. So we're gonna start with the center back seam allowance and we want the right side of the shirt facing out and the wrong side of the facing facing out. So the two right sides are together. So start by aligning the center back. Then I like to move to the center front, align your pins, remove and pin. And then same thing with the quarter points. Now you can see here the way this lays, the neckline is ever so slightly longer than the bias strip. And that's fine because this can stretch slightly. And what that does is make sure that your neckline doesn't stretch out. So find the center point between each 
section we just pinned and place a pin there. So we're just working always towards the center. Centers out, find the center, and they should align really nicely. Get some more pins. All right, so now I have my original quarter points, and then I have pinned in between each one. So if you don't feel comfortable sewing like this, you can add another pin in between each one. If you do, what we're going to do is head over to the machine and attach the facing to the shirt. We're gonna do that. I like to start at the back, and you're gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance, sew all the way around, and then end back at the back. So let's go do that now. If your machine has free arm capabilities, I find it easiest um, to use that here. So I just remove the slide on table from my machine, place my fabric under the foot, and I'm using my quarter inch foot here, so the edge of the foot marks a quarter inch. I'm just gonna back tack, and you can see Right here, the fabric is starting to, the seam allowance is starting to come up over the foot. Just lift your foot and make sure that's nice and flat. And then as you sew, remove the pins and use your fingers to make sure everything's lining up properly. When you get to the shoulder seam, make sure that's going flush under the foot. Just continue to work around. back at the original point. Back tack and clip your threads. So now you can see we have the facing attached. Before we press anything, we're gonna need to do a little trimming. All right, so here we have our facing attached and you can see it's already trying to roll to the inside of the garment, especially on the curve. But before we let it do that, we need to first clip and grade our seam allowance. So we're going to grade the seam allowance of the bias strip by cutting it in half. And this just reduces bulk and allows the neckline to sit a little bit better. Take your time doing this. There's no need to rush. You wanna make sure you only cut the top layer of the seam allowance. You don't wanna cut the seam allowance of the shirt. A lot of people like to use applique or duckbill scissors. If you have those, they're a fun thing to try out. I personally don't like them. Um, I just find them a little big and unwieldy. 
but that's totally up to your personal preference. Almost back around. Where are we? Oh yeah, we are. <laughs> Okay, just remove. And here you can see we have our seam allowance graded. So this is the longer shirt and the shorter bias facing. Now what we're gonna do is go around the neckline and clip to but not through the seam line every inch or so. And this just allows the neckline of the shirt to have the flexibility it needs to roll to the inside of the garment. There we are back at the beginning. So we now have a graded and clipped neckline. Next we need to press. Now we're going to press the bias strip up away from the garment along with the seam allowance. So everything here is just going up. I like to do this on a ham because again your body is curved and so is the ham. So just gently work around. And here we are back where we started. The next thing we're going to do is understitch. And to do this, we're going to stitch close to the edge on the bias facing through the facing and the seam allowance. And what this does is when you anchor them together and then turn the facing towards the inside, it forces that seam line to roll to the inside. So you're not looking at it on the front of your body. So head over to the machine and I'll show you how to do that now. All right, so here you can see I've switched out my quarter inch foot for an edge stitching foot. This follows along um, the edge of your fabric and just stitches a consistent distance from whatever you're following. So I slide my fabric under. You can see the needle, I have it um, scooted over to the right. I'm just going to back tap. And then just stitch around.
Here we are back at the end. Backpack, needle up, and clip your threads. And now here you can see the edge and then we just stitched through the facing and through the seam allowance. And you can see how nice that edge stitch got it evenly from the edge. So if you have one, it's a really fun thing to try out. All right, after you've understitched, we're going to turn and press the bias strip to the wrong side of the shirt. Nice. And again, I'm doing this on a ham. It also makes it easier than doing it over the edge of your ironing board. Just work your way around. You can see how the seam line is just rolling to the underside of the garment really nicely because we understitched. So when I said you didn't want to skip any of these steps, I was not lying. Sometimes people like to give me a hard time about how many steps I put into this, but it's really worth it. I'm all about cutting corners where it's fine to cut corners, but if you got to do something, you got to do something. All right. So we have now pressed all the way around our neckline. All right, now get some pins handy because we are going to start pressing the raw edge of the facing under. So you're just taking the raw edge, you're pressing it under to the seam line. and then giving that a press with your iron. And then just pin it in place. You're gonna work around the neck doing that. Turn it under. and pin. This process used to really stress me out. Um, but I've done it enough times now that it's actually kind of relaxing. Get into your groove, kind of space out and pin. <laughs> Next thing you know, you have a neckline. And 
everyone just take your time. There's no need to rush. This is our hobby, so we don't need to finish it by a certain time or any of that. Sometimes the internet can make it feel like, oh, I have to finish all these things. I haven't made as many things as other people, but try not to worry about that. Just sew at your own speed. One last section. So now that our bias facing is pressed and pinned into place, we need to go over to the machine and stitch this free folded edge down. That's the edge we just folded under and it's not attached to anything, hence why it's called the free folded edge. So we're just going to stitch through the facing, the bias strip, and the shirt so it's anchored in place. So let's go do that now. Okay, now I'm going to once again use my edge stitch foot because I'm stitching against an edge. So I'm just gonna start, do a little back tack, and then just work around. to sew with my hands all up in my machine so I hope I'm keeping it out of there enough for you. Here we are approaching where we started. Just back tack, lift your needle and clip your threads. All right, so here you can see we caught the facing and on the front, we just have a single line of stitching. All right, so here we have our neckline facing attached. You can see it's laying nice and flat. Um, we're gonna flip it right side out. And if you feel like any part of it is standing out, what you can do is put your ham under and this will kind of mimic the shape of the chest and just press it around the ham, just kind of mold it a little bit. You can just get a really nice shape that way. So that is it for the neckline. Now let's hem real quick. Place it over the edge of your ironing board and we're just going to press up a quarter of an inch around the hem. You can use a seam gauge if you like or you can eyeball it. 
whatever works best for you. If you've been sewing for a while, I'm sure you're able to just press up a quarter of an inch. Your fingers start to remember how much that is. Try not to burn yourself like I just did. Wouldn't be so long without burning myself, would it? Continue working around. I'm always at an awkward angle when I'm filming these. <laughs> All right, past the other side seam. And there we are. All right, so now we just have a raw edge here. So what we're gonna do is press it up again, another quarter of an inch to conceal that raw edge. So work your way around again. You don't necessarily need to pin this hem. If you feel uncomfortable, you can pin it. Um, I don't really find that I need to. Kind of just stays folded when I'm at the machine. And here we are back where we started. So once again, we're gonna head over to the machine and we're gonna stitch this free folded edge down. All right, I'm using my edge stitch foot again because I'm stitching on an edge. And just work your way around. You don't want to pull too hard or stretch the fabric because you don't want a wavy hem. the beginning, do a little back tack, needle up, and then clip your threads. All right, and here you can see we've caught our hem nicely. It's a nice even line away. Our front looks great. All right, and here we can see the hem looks good on the front and the back. It's all the way stitched down, so that's all there is for hemming. All right, so we now have our neckline finished, our hem is sewn, and all we have left is the sleeves. So the shells of our scout are now complete. We have the neckline sewn, as well as our hem, and we just have the sleeves left to go. In our next video, we'll be assembling the original scout cap sleeve, and also showing you how to set a sleeve. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our video updates. I'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye.